let's get back inside, do a little video tutorial. Alrighty, so I am home and I figured I'll make a little video for you guys today here from home and instead of on the scooter. It's been a little bit of a while since I've actually made another video. I've been kind of away. I'll be honest with you, I've kind of lacked the motivation to sit down and do another video. It's been such a crazy summer. Of course, it's been a crazy 2020 as all of you know and I'm sure share the experience with all this COVID-19 and of course the political atmosphere in the US and all the protests and the fact that we haven't been able to travel, been getting a little bit of cabin fever, working here constantly and staying at home. Love to travel and go around as you guys all know. So I've been kind of lacking in motivation to make these but uh, as July started now we're having a new batch of residents at our school and we just had our first meeting with the first year residents and had a little Zoom meeting on a treatment planning session and I shared one of the cases I'd done that day and I figured why not just share that particular case with you guys today and right now and it may be of some benefit to you. Also write down below in your comments here see how is this COVID-19 thing catching up with you or have you guys had enough of it already or not and uh, tell me what, how you guys are doing and what are you doing to stay sane during this time. But let's get back to the case and this was a case that you don't see that often anymore. It was a case of a silver point that had been done on this premolar tooth many many years ago. In fact the silver point was older than me. It was done in the 60s. This tooth had been, remained asymptomatic, was under a bridge for a long time and now the bridge was going to be redone but the secondary to some decay that was present on the buccal aspect of this tooth and the prosthodontist who was the referring dentist wanted to have the silver points redone so that a little bit of a post space can be made and uh, be used for a little bit further retention now that some decay had destroyed the buccal aspect of this tooth. So what we decided to do uh, was to retreat and revise this tooth non-surgically understanding fully that when you are ending up having silver points that have been well done and are not infected they're not necessarily so easy to remove because they're well sealed and the corrosion products add some additional type of friction to prevent the removal of these silver points. Of course, as usual, the concept of removal of any silver point is primarily the ability for you to grab the, 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 the end point of the silver point. After that, be able to kind of withdraw it with having some purchase on the point, making sure that you are not too heavy handed in order to potentially break off that segment. Remember, silver is a very malleable material and as a result, if you are too tough with it, you're not going to be able to not only grab it because it'll actually bend and in a ductile fashion to form, but more problematically, it could actually break off and now you have nothing to hold on to. So here I started the case with actually taking a CBCT with my X800 and to look and see what's going on. Fortunately, even with a 360 degree rotation with the X800, you still with silver points, you'll end up having to have a lot of scatter. So as a result, the, the 3D image and this tooth only told me that we have two roots that are kind of angled in different ways and that there is no peripheral lesion. Further consolidating the idea that it's going to be a more difficult material or rather more difficult silver points to remove. So as a result, after doing the axis preparation in this particular tooth, because of the fact that the whole buckle wall was gone and there's no distal tooth so that I could actually isolate and put a clamp on the distal tooth and pull it over, I ended up having to put the clamp, white, making finding a wide clamp and putting a little bit pushing on the gingiva and as a result I had to kind of isolate the area also with my uh, caulking material. And once that was done and having isolated the tooth I had to remove some of the composite. There was also a pin in this tooth and wherever there is a pin you don't necessarily want to remove the pin because now the hole in the pin is going to be difficult to seal as well and this pin that hadn't caused any cracks or any problems. So and kind of a limited access was made to the tooth and I could see now the buckle silver point as well as the paddle silver point. And at this point the key here is to use an ultrasonic and put it by varying the degree of the power on your ultrasonic what you need to do is you need to be able to remove the 
cement and some of the dentin around the silver point without really touching the silver point. So you will end up with a little bit of a higher power by not touching the silver point. And then as you get closer to the silver point, you'll have to lower the power setting on your ultrasonic in order to make sure you're not damaging the silver point and vibrating it too much with potentially breaking it off. So after that was done, I ended up troughing around the area as well. The key here is to remove all the corrosion products, all the soft material that'll prevent and cause friction in this area. Another key point here is to make sure you use water. There's no reason to use any of these ultrasonic materials in a dry fashion. And that's a big mistake that people who advocate for the use of ultrasonics with dry tips don't understand is the fact that most of the power is actually transmitted through the liquid medium. And that's why you always have to use your ultrasonics with a wet tip that is actually using water or any other liquid if you want to use a different liquid. But water is most of the time adequate because it's the whole point here is to transfer the energy. So here we make a trough around this uh, tooth using my E14D ultrasonic, which is a tip with some diamond coating, and then proceeded to the use of the E11 or E12 tip, depending on the angle that you need here, I use the E11 tip with a U-bladed file so that I could kind of get very deep in there and trough around the ultrasonic point. Now, this was a silver point that was very well set with the microscope, I could see that there was completely a friction grip between the dentin and the, and the silver point. There was not enough room to kind of snake in a file. Oftentimes, if there's a lot of room, what you could do is you could snake in a file or a headstrom that will then engage the side of the silver point and you can pull out that way. But here, there was a very nice circumferential 360 degree seal around the cement, very thin cement area but very high area of uh, contact with the silver point. As you can see, they're very thick silver points. But I did manage to kind of just trough in the area and then uh, used a little bit of chloroform so that if there is any zinc oxide usual cement still left there, hopefully that it could maybe help to soften it a little bit. And there was also little pieces of soft material that I could see that looked like got a purchase. So I figured that it might help with that as well. So doing that and then adding again some more ultrasonic energy to that silver point with the presence of chloroform is still help uh, vibrate the material. Again, the whole key at this point is to make sure you're not really pushing on the silver point tip and you're not just aggressively trying to remove it the same way you would be trying to remove a post because a post is oftentimes stainless steel so it could take all that energy but a silver point cannot and as soon as you break one of these things off now you're off to have to do surgery in order to push it from the other end of the root up and other uh, mechanisms of trying to retrieve it by removing much more dentin and remove it like a broken instrument. Anyway, so after doing that for a little while and then switching to another ultrasonic tip that was a little bit more robust but thinner in order to vibrate at lower energies, I then used this uh, instrument that is a very fine kind of a grabbing instrument that's finer than a, a Stiglitz instrument. So what you could do is once you have enough of a tip and you need at least one or one and a half, ideally two millimeters uh, or more of the tip so that you can grab. But keep in mind that if, if something is well cemented, this tip, because it's so long, doesn't have enough power to grab it. It'll keep slipping off of the tip because it doesn't create enough of a hard grip in order to pull the material off. So what you need to do is you need to, if you can, with one hand, grab the, uh, use the instrument to grab the tip, and then you can use your other hand to secure the tip of the instrument, or maybe your assistant could use some stiglets to exert some pressure at the tip so it doesn't slip off, and then you can actually withdraw and remove the silver point this way. And you can see in the silver point, you have a very nice seal. There's not much corrosion products in the middle portion of this tooth showing that that's why you're having a very nice seal and it was difficult to remove. And then we proceed to do the same thing by removing some more dentin again a little bit and then doing the same thing with the paddle a silver point, trying to remove it again with this instrument. And here with the paddle, it just kind of, as soon as I remove it, it kind of uh, br uh, breaks off and falls off. But once the instruments have removed now, the two canals are present. The key with the silver points is to make sure that you're not removing or going all the way to the apex right off the bat because you have a lot of corrosion products that you've left on the canal walls. And if you're not careful and you go down to the apex and start to instrument very aggressively, what you're gonna end up doing, you might be pushing a lot of the corrosion products out apically and that is going to cause a 
lot of post-op pain that you need to kind of make sure you can avoid. In this particular case, what I did is I, once I measured the working length and I used the ESR Scout in this particular case, I switched to the use of the 3D files and uh, I used the 3D Shaper first, followed by the 3D Finisher R, which is a, uh, a little bit more robust for removal and the combination of just using uh, EDTA and hypochlorite followed by the use of the finisher here allowed me to completely clean those walls three-dimensionally and remove all of the corrosion products as best as I could. And at the very end, what I use, I use the 4004 endo sequence file so that I could dictate that 4004 shape here in this tooth and then be able to fit it. Now, Using a combination of negative pressure and so on, I managed to kind of get the canals dry. And what I did also using pepper points to dry this area, made sure to reconfirm that point of uh, wetness with a paper point to confirm what my length is. And then I proceeded to use the um, gutta percha. And I used the size 4004 in one of the canals, but I used a 4504 in the other one because I was actually more interested in being just a slightly shorter with the gutta percha and maybe, maybe have even a little bit of a B sealer plug here at the apex so that it could just have a little bit more biocompatibility on that front. And for the paddle route where I wanted to create a post space, I used a novel post technique that I described back in 2008 called the Nesse post technique, some people have been calling it, and that's essentially the idea that I've been, because of hydraulic condensation and the fact that you're relying on the cement being a cement fill, you can pre-cut your gutta percha point after fitting your gutta percha point with a locking plier to the full length. You could cut the apical segment of the gutta percha point off and then you can drop that into the canal after placement of the sealer and then push it down to the full length with the remaining handle that's on your locking pliers confirming that it's seated all the way to the end and sealed. I oftentimes also add a little bit of heat right there at that portion so I can seal the gutta percha around so I don't have too much of a layer of cement around it so that I can then clean up the cement from the canal walls and then I put the provisional back on and here in the post stop x-ray you can see that we have the tooth treated there's a little bit of a puff which is not inconsequential it's not a problem and I've created the post space now in retrospect that post space should technically be deeper I kind of eyed it this time when I was trying to cut the gutta percha and you know what you want to have ideally for the distance of your post space is somewhere half the distance from the crystal bone to the apex this time I just cut the gutta percha segment off a little bit past half the working length that I had measured and that's why it doesn't seem deep enough but it's not a problem they could always go in and add a little bit more space to this a couple of millimeters more and you'll be in good shape so this was a case that I wanted to quickly share with you this was a simple method using the ultrasonic which is what I use 99% of the time to remove any of these broken segments or silver points and things like that obstructions in the canal with the specific use of this instrument that is allows you to grab things in very very tight places you can also use your negative pressure sometimes if something is very loose to grab onto it you could use the stiglitz which is a far more robust instrument to grab these segments but in this particular case there was not enough room the stiglitz beak is far too fat to fit inside this tooth and I, it's not what I use there's also other kits that use mechanical ways such as Maseran kit or a rattle kit and I think there was a mesh 2 kit as well all of which are based on threading kind of creating a tapping the end of this uh, of the silver point and then putting a um, a tube over the material and then pulling it out. Another technique which I have shown in other videos is also the addition of a tube over this uh, segment that is exposed as long as it's about a millimeter or two and the addition of either crazy glue and then also I have a couple of other cases in which I've in fact just used the BC liner as the glue if you will for uh, grabbing this instrument in a tube and then pulling it out. I will have other videos to show that, but I figured after a few weeks of being out of it, I started with this case and I hope it was helpful and useful to you. We don't get to see that many silver points anymore. And the reason for that is because the ones that were not good and they failed have already been treated and retreated. But cases that have been done very well, well sealed are still around of these silver points. And those are actually the well sealed, the well done cases are much more difficult to retreat than the ones that have been done in a poor fashion, in a sloppy fashion. And it's probably true with all cases. Any case that has been well done is more difficult to retreat than a case that hasn't been so well done.
Anyway, write down your questions or comments below. Let me know what you think and how would you have treated this tooth and would you have done the same thing or not? Obviously, the need for a post space was the main reason for revising this tooth. Otherwise, if uh, you don't necessarily have to revise silver points in the absence of any symptoms or peripheral lesions. Okay, that's it. I hope that I'll see you soon again in the next video. And uh, until then, stay safe, stay healthy, uh, be with the family, take care of yourself, and let's save some teeth.